Starting to the top right of the map after a loss against Noblesse is the Azubu Zerg player. This is... Azubu Pumpu. He is in the danger zone. Yeah. One more loss and it's all over. If he loses here, he will get the third spot in the group. A potential wildcard spot if we have a wildcard group. But he will not go to Kodes. He has to beat his opponent. To the bottom left, in blue, starting for KT Rollstar. This is... KT Crazy. Crazy has shown us crazy games and he is strong. He's proven it. Well, that GSL symbol comes a little bit late to the party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's there. It's always funny when that happens. Yeah. And Crazy actually won earlier in the group stage. When we had the round robin group stage, he was able to take down Bumbu, the only player, in fact, who was able to beat Bumbu. Yes. Now Bumbu has lost to Noble S as well. And this puts him on his final life. Both players, well, no, Crazy. They both go for pool first. They both had 15 pools, so it looked like they might go hatch first, and they both had second thoughts. That is just them being scared as hell. I mean, on this map, you usually don't go really for an early pool, but you can go for 10 pool, 10 gas, if you think your opponent goes for 15 hatch. And 15 hatch is usually the build that you will see on Daybreak. But in this scenario, both of them are just like, no, I'm not gonna go 15 yeah, hatch. Yeah, and you can see, usually it's either 14 pool or 15 hatch, not 15 pool. And it, it, it just seems like they're both considered 15 pool, and they're like, no, I'm not gonna lose here. Now the gas is going down a little bit faster for Crazy. And one more drone for Boom Boom, so that's the differentiation it builds. That's the only differentiation. Yeah. Big question now, of course, given the first game that they played, is will we see will we see actually Mutalisks again by Boom Boom? He played them in game one, and he traded quite cost efficiently with them when he took down four Infestors for Crazy. But still, it put him in a bit of a weird spot, and Crazy had the far better tech. He could rely on the, his tech in Infestors a lot more, especially in the Roach fights that occurred later on. So this is going to be really interesting right now. Will Boom Boom change his build? Or will he go for the same style that he used against Crazy in their earlier game? It's a good question. I feel he changes it. I don't think he wants to use the same build that he's first of all shown his opponent and also failed with. It might be the last thing Crazy expects, but I think we're gonna see Boom Boom play a more standard game here, perhaps even a little bit reactionary. Speed for both players started around the same time. Yep, scouts are out there, they're going for normal game. We don't see any kind of early game aggression just yet. No speedling uh, attack so far, no bailing nests. They will be built very, very soon. You have to have bailings on this map, there's just no way around it. Keep also in mind that for Boom Boom, this is a situation where he couldn't relax. He plays two games back to back. Noblesse is the one who can calm himself now down after this victory against Boom Boom and he is now preparing for his potential map match against Crazy. If Boom Boom wins this game now and then Crazy takes down Noblesse, then we have another tiebreaker. Then we go into tiebreaker number two. Yes. And this could continue on. There goes the bailing for Boom Boom. His is a little bit later. Sixlings on the way for Boom Boom as well. We'll have to fall very closely what he does with this next overlord that comes out. He could go for some Ling aggression. This is a nerve-wracking situation in the group. This is a six-player group that we had, and this tiebreaker, it could produce an unlimited amount of games here. The first match already was epic. There's just no other word to describe it. Boom Boom and Oblast really went at it. Now Boom Boom has to show us that he is able to take down Crazy in a ZVZ. In the group stage, he wasn't able to do it, but maybe now he can pull it off. It was close. It was not a match that Crazy dominated the first time they played. It was on a kill on flats, now it's on Daybreak. And Boom Boom the first one to head into the lead tank. Yeah, he's putting pressure on with a lot of links before he does so. But not uh, the amount of links where this is an all-in by any means. It's just a little bit scary. It forces Crazy to react. He's trying to push Crazy's buttons here a little bit, but Crazy finds it. He's got the Watchtower, and he's going to hide his Banelings in there. Ooh! Oh, that was close, but he saw it with the Overlord. He saw everything. Two Trading. for two. Exactly, two for two. No problem. This is so tense cover. Yeah, it definitely is. Well, that tech also started now for Crazy, of course, a little bit later than his opponent. But the big in the big thing is what's going to happen as soon as they complete it there. Who is going to go into Infestors? Who's going into... Ah, uh, I wanted to say Muralist, but now Boom Boom, the one that we suspect that might go into Aspire, actually added his Roach Warren first. Yeah. Roach Warren first. Both of them joining up heavily right now. Boom Boom with a few more links. 
flare yeah. done. And I think we're just going to see, yep, there's the plus one coming out. The yeah, chamber. that's definitely not going to be a spy build by Boom Boom anymore. But Crazy could go for one. He could. Lair is finishing up right now. He adds a spine. It starts to look that way. He yeah. could also go in Festers, but Spire is more common these days. Well, he doesn't have a Roach oh. Warren just yet, so it would make sense. Good hit by Crazy. Oh! But good hit by Boom Boom in return, and there's the Spire. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Without the Roach Warren and not a single attack upgrade being started, this is exactly what he would expect. The question now is when will Boom Boom build his infestation pit? Yeah, he needs to do it soon. It almost looks like he's gearing up to just hit a roach timing with plus one at speed and try to attack his opponent directly at that point. But the mutas are almost a direct counter to that, especially on a map of this size. Mm, the timing is important. If you attack early enough and there are not enough spine crawlers, then you can take down so much. Even when the mutas are there, it you takes a quite them. a while for them. Exactly. You ignore them, you can't do anything about them anyways. So you just take your time and try to take down as many harvests as possible. Both players scouting at the exact same moment. It's almost as if they've trained together. That's the infestation pit. So basically what happens in this game is that they are both going for the opposite build that they used the last time. And Boom Boom will see the Spire. Yeah. He sees the Spire, but he will most likely also see the Roach Warren, which is important here. It already shows that Crazy will transition. Only, she has. Uh, I was just going to say, one only, only one Overlord on the map for Boom Boom, so this is not going to be a problem for him. He is supply blocked regardless, but he's not going to lose a lot of Overlords to the Mutas that come out. Boom Boom will be the one who has a lead in uh, the attack upgrades for the Roaches, who has the Infestors out earlier, and his reaction of scouting the Spire is going into additional Queens. That will help him out quite a bit up to the point where he has the Infestors in a position where they can be dangerous to the Mutalisks. No. An attempt at Banley here to fail. The hatchery timing's a little bit favoring crazy right now, but with the mutas that come out, uh, he's going to want to attack Boom Boom's hatch and try to keep it shut down. Three spores, patching glands, two infestors. Here come those lings. He wants to shut down Boom Boom's hatch and keep the focus on that third base. Yeah, the spore crawlers are nearly completed now. The infestation pit also started for Crazy. He wants to go into the same composition. Just doing a little bit of damage, taking down those Overlords. Yep, one Overlord got lazy, didn't that's return. That's one Overlord that just was out there earlier. Yep. He paid for it. He's like the guy who doesn't listen to hur hurricane warnings. <laughs> well, I mean, that's you get what you get. Now we have the plus two attack upgrade started, whereas, of course, for Crazy, the plus one has been started too. But this is now getting really interesting. This is all about the timings now, about if you can attack with your upgrade advantage, if you get this third base, if you can defend it, how much gas you mine. And so far, I have to say that Boom Boom is really looking good. Yeah, he's got the proper tech. He's getting plus two. Look at the production tab. Plus two lines up with plus one. That's how ahead he is. Yeah. He's like a whole cycle ahead. A whole cycle ahead, but he needs to get the army out now, and then he could actually just try to attack. Yeah, Crazy wants to get some of these Banelings. You know, Banelings just not a big deal at this moment in time. It's not worth losing Mutas over trying to snipe that Baneling so he gets away without yeah. dealing with the Infestors. Boom Boom could also just start to go into a, a Hydralisk pretty soon. Hydralisk would give him the chance to move out a little bit more comfortable because he has something against the Mutalisk. There are not too many Mutalisks, so he can also rely on Infestor Terrans and the Fungal, but he decides to go into the Hydra then. There it is on the production tab. All this tech, on the other hand, gives Crazy a lead in the overall supply. Yeah, but I, I wonder what sort of... See the Hydra comes, Hydrogen comes in for Boom Boom. How many Hydras is he going to make before uh, he has the Roach count to support them? Because we've seen games change in ZBZ. We talked about this last time in our ZBZ. Sometimes a good flank against the Hydras, or just having too many Hydras instead of the Roaches can change a game. It's not always about who gets the hydrogen first, it's about plus how you use it. Two attack is nearly completed, so it's the plus one for Crazy. But this is really a huge upgrade advantage that Boom Boom currently has. And he also is ahead in the Infest account by quite a bit. Eight to five and more energy. Here comes seven Hydras. He has the Hydras faster, the range upgrade faster, the plus two attack upgrade faster. If he hits the timing with this, even though he's a little bit behind in supply, in army supply, he is actually even with his opponent. Oh, he's yeah. a bit behind. A bit still. behind, but the better composition. Much better composition. Upgrades immediately starts plus one carapace, not a second wasted. And Crazy doesn't. Crazy doesn't start a single upgrade. And he has the resource, he needs to do it. He starts range now, and uh, there's the plus two. Yeah, but a little bit late. The armor upgrade will definitely finish faster. This is a very tiny window, but this is actually a window. If, if Boom Boom is able to hit that window, he will win that in a landslide. Overseer goes down. 
Uh, this, this, is, is, this, is, this is intense. This is intense. I, I think that... The thing is, Boom Boom has the crazy lead, but he's given crazy enough time to get 16 Hydras out, the base of the top yeah. left. In a situation like this, if you're actually ending up in a tiebreaker, every time you win a map, you already know, okay, I cannot lose, I cannot drop down. I might have to play another tiebreaker, but I cannot lose this one. I'm already in a position where I'm I'm safe, at least for this tiebreaker. So this is where Boom Boom is at now. He lost one game and he knows that his entire life is depending on this map win. For Crazy, of course, this is also important, but he knows that even if he loses to Boom Boom, he has another shot by defeating Noblesse. Yes. That's why I said earlier I thought it would be more likely for him to go for a uh, weird build. One Baneling gets in here. Yeah, uh, not doing too much. It goes to the Queen. Well, things will be shut down. This buys Crazy a little bit more time, though, and Crazy starts 12 drones. He's already ahead 10, so he's going to have a much better economy, but that also weakens his army. And the army for Boom Boom is nearly maxed out. The same is true for Crazy. Both of them are really going at it. The attack upgrade plus 2 is not done just yet. Here comes the arm upgrade for Boom Boom, and he's moving out. He's moving out with it. He's trying to hit the timing. He's currently... Boom Boom, he doesn't know about this, of course. I mean, how could he? We know everything that happens, but if he attacks now, he's on 2-1 against 1-0. Yeah, and he just, he does He might. Hit. Well, you know, he, he might. just barely may. This is going to be close. He considers. He's going there are three spines. He's going he in. Goes. He has the upgrade lead, a massive upgrade lead. The plus two attack upgrade is not done for Crazy just yet. This is Boom Boom Way with his chance. More infested turrets for Boom Boom. But Crazy is taking the supply lead here. He's remaxing a little bit faster. Now Boom Boom has the larva. He's trying to decide exactly who wants to remax. It depends on how this fight goes for him. Those overlords are going to be down, but somehow Roach just snuck into the main base at the top right. The overlords for Crazy, they are gone. Pang. All of them annihilated, but he's not supplier blocked. He actually built a lot earlier. This main base battle is going in Crazy's favor. Yeah, he killed the spawning pool, which is not really a big deal at this point, but it's something he may decide to remake later. Probably not, though. Crazy is a little bit supply blocked here, and Boom Boom wants to escape with his very expensive and very damage dealing Hydras. Good fungal so far, but Crazy may get the surround here. Uh oh, the reinforcements here for Boom Boom. They're in a bad spot, but he's ahead in supply because Crazy was supplied for nice, this long. Bro. The reinforcements for Boom Boom finally coming in. Can he get another fungal off? The upgrades have the are really showing through here with Boom Boom's army. Oh, Otherwise, yeah. if they were even, Crazy would have won that fight. But as it is, Boom Boom escapes, is now going for a run by to the north. And he needs to, because if he lets Crazy go for too long, Crazy's economy is going to get out of control. Boom Boom is still having the upgrades. Yes, both of them are on plus two attack, but we have the first armor upgrade for Boom Boom, which gives him a slight edge. And now he's moving in. He wants to take down his fourth base. He knows he's down a base. He has to take it out, and he kills the Harvesters. The Harvesters are on their way out, but they're a bit too slow. The fungal is not there, though. Doesn't get the fungal, but now he gets a sandwich position. He's moving in from the back with another set of roaches. All oh, these roaches making it very awkward for Crazy. He's trying to figure out the best way to engage this, but he's kind of trapped and surrounded. Boom Boom comes in, makes a triangle here, and Crazy sandwiched in the middle. Looks like Boom Boom saves himself here, and the tiebreaker is going to continue. Oh my god, it looks really like he could pull this off. He's 50 supply ahead right now, and Crazy, he's really, he is really desperately trying to do something, even building Mutalisk again. God knows why. I don't. We are moving into the third base now of Crazy. Here comes another fun Crazy. He's trying to use his investors, but he's losing way too much. He's dropping in supply. This is insane. Boom Boom is able to win the second game. Boom Boom does it. He takes out the overlords in the middle of the map. The hatchery goes down. Production so limited here now for Crazy. Boom Boom just starts his plus two carapace. He is the upgrade man in this best of, well, best of one in this tiebreaker. With a 50 supply lead, it should not be possible to lose this game anymore. He boom, just has boom. the better production too. Yeah, he has such a bank. His problem is really lava. But he is hitting his injects now. He's streaming across the map. And the base, it is gone. The drones, they are trying to get to the top. But they are already high on the disc intercepting them. Crazy is fighting for dear life here. Remember, like you said though, it's all about losing twice. So even if Crazy loses this, it's not the end just yet. GG. GG. Crazy realizes that he has to pull it off against Noblesse. Whoa, Boom Boom. He's like, whoa. He's sweating. Look at this face. This guy is. He's just completely on the edge. And he should be. I mean, this is 
a big deal here. This yeah. is a code S spot on the line. This is a relief for him. This is him just looking at it. He's like, okay, that was close, but I did it. I saved myself for now. I can go into another tiebreaker. And now he's just going to sit there and he is going to uh, cheer for Noblesse like crazy. The next game is going to be Noblesse versus Crazy. And I hate this nickname, by the way. I hate it. Yeah, me too. It's driving me nuts. So it's driving many, me crazy. Exactly. It's driving me crazy. So many unintended puns and you the repeat is, it over and over again. And it's like always like... In <laughs> contemporary English language... Where did I get this I pen, I thought you actually way? just broke that pen for a second. No, I wanted to and I really want to. Now I'm like... Ugh. Um, but in contemporary English language, people use the word crazy. Uh, I think it's actually an overused word in our language. It's kind of like the word like. You you know, yeah. you know, like what I'm talking about? I can definitely tell you that this word has been overused in this cast. It, it has. We're going to a five-minute break no! before we go into the next series. So I don't want to have a five-minute break. I want to have this game, and I want to have it now. Everybody needs to just calm down at home. This is I don't want to calm down. I'm going to go tranquilize Calder. Wait five <laughs> minutes. We'll see you then. See you in five.